Now, some of these identities are going to get quite challenging. So, especially when you look at them and they look as complicated as this one does. Here we have cosine of x minus cosine of y over sine of x plus sine of y plus sine of x minus sine of y over cosine of x plus cosine of y. And when you add those two fractions together, you're going to get zero. So we're going to do the same thing that we normally do. And let's try and get a common denominator. So I have cosine of x minus cosine of y. That's a binomial. And that's over the binomial sine of x plus sine of y. And to have a common denominator, I'm going to need to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by cosine of x plus cosine of y. Because that's what the second fraction has. Well, the second fraction has that cosine of x plus cosine of y. It needs sine of x plus sine of y like the first fraction has in its denominator. And all of this is going to eventually equal zero, is what we hope. So we're going to rewrite this all over one denominator. Sine of x plus sine of y times cosine of x plus cosine of y. And in the numerator, we're multiplying conjugates which is going to result in cosine squared of x minus cosine squared of y. Those are different angles, so they don't zero out. Plus, again, we have conjugates. Sine squared of x minus sine squared of y. Again, they're different angles, so they don't zero out. However, Let's see what happens when we combine like terms and or use some identities. If I look at the trig, I, the trig expressions that have the same angle, cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x, that's 1. Cosine squared of an angle plus sine squared of the same angle is equal to 1. Then I have minus cosine squared of y minus sine squared of y. Well, if I factor out a negative, first let's make this 1 so that we can write a little bit less than what we wanted to, right? Over sine of x. Look at what I'm going to do. And if you have a technology that you can do this, I encourage you to do this as well. Look at that. There we go. I'm going to factor out this negative from both terms, and that's going to leave us with cosine squared of y plus sine squared of y. And what's cosine squared of y plus sine squared of y? Well, this is also 1. So step 5, we're going to have 1 minus 1 all over, let's see if I can hit that paste again. I can, look at that. All over that denominator, which is equal to zero. So while you're catching up, I'm gonna resize this and give myself a little bit more room because it is important that we write these last steps. You can't just stop short. Zero over anything is zero. So zero over any denominator other than zero is zero.